So Basecamp came out with a statement, um, and it's 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 you know got six points, uh, and uh, basically what they're saying is we're changing corporate policy, we're completely reorienting uh, how we're doing a bunch of different things, right? A bunch of different things. And the first one is, uh, and and I'll read this to you. The first one is no more societal and political discussions on our company Basecamp account. So no politics at work, no cultural, political discussions, arguments, debates at work. You do whatever you want on Twitter, do whatever you want on your Facebook page, but not at work. They write, today's social and political waters are especially choppy. Sensitivities are at 11. And every discussion remotely related to politics, advocacy, or society at large quickly spins away from pleasant. You shouldn't have to wonder if staying out, uh, staying out of it means you're complicit or wading into it means you're a target. These are difficult enough waters to navigate in life, but significantly more so at work. It's become too much. It's a major distraction. It saps our energy and redirects our dialogue towards dark places. It's not healthy. It hasn't served us well. And uh, we've done, we're done with it in our company, uh, company base camp account where the work happens. People can take the conversations with willing coworkers to signal WhatsApp or even a personal base camp account. But it can't happen where the work happens anymore. Right? So basically they're saying at base camp, we're here to work, we're here to produce, we're here to create value. We're here to maximize shareholder wealth, if you will. We're here to be productive. We're here to do the work. This is distracting. This is no good. Now, there's a certain element that's tragic and sad. It's tragic and sad that we live in a world today where you cannot have disagreement about certain issues, primarily cultural issues, because people are, people get super angry, they call each other names very quickly, and it is unbelievably disrupt disruptive and destructive to actual work environment. So it, it, it's, it, it's horrible. You know, it's not a violation of free speech, but it's horrible that we live in a world in which people cannot have if you were polite disagreements about politics and about culture, that the passions flare up so badly and that the view of the other side is so vicious that people from different perspectives cannot share a workplace and have open discussions. But that is the world in which we live. I think this is driven primarily by the left, by the woke kind of culture, by the fact that you disagree with them on anything, you're a racist. You disagree with them on anything. You're a horrible, despicable human being. And therefore, should be shunned and, had, and, and people should have nothing to do with you. They bring that kind of attitude into the workplace and suddenly teams that have worked fantastically well, employees that have gotten along great with their bosses, suddenly can't work anymore. They, they can't function anymore. Because everything now is political, and your political views now dominate. And this is true primarily on the left. The left is far more passionate, far more emotional, far more vigilant with regard to their positions. I saw a study that shows that um, it's far more prevalent on the left to say they will never date somebody on the right that on the right saying they will never date somebody on the left. It's, it's still prevalent on the right, but it's far more prevalent on the left. So the leftists are much more hateful of anybody on the right. And this is entering into the workplace. And I think Basecamp could have capitulated to the left, capitulated 
on the, the demands in a sense either to cleanse the company or to take a stand as a company in support of the leftist causes, which many companies are doing because of this passion that is brought to the forefront. Instead, instead what the company has done is said, no discussions, no debate, not in company time, it's not appropriate. And they admit that this is not what they would like. Uh, I'm going to read you from another blog post uh, from one of, the, one of the senior executives. We also like to tell ourselves that having these discussions with the whole company is healthy, these kind of political cultural discussions. I used to think that too, but I no longer do. I think it's become ever more stressful, unnerving, and counterproductive. No common thread on base camp is going to close the gap on fundamental philosophical and political differences. And we're left worse for the wear when we try. Therefore, we're asking everyone, including Jason and me, two senior executives, to refrain from using our company base camp, or hey, hey is a, I guess a platform they use, to discuss societal politics at work effectively, effective immediately. This includes everything from sharing political stories in campfire, using message threads to elucidate others on political beliefs that go beyond the topic directly, or performing political advocacy in general. So asking people to stop talking about these questions at work, or the equivalent of at work, given that they are a um, virtual organization. That's pretty powerful, particularly for a company that I think prided themselves on a on a um, on being open, on having discussions and having debates, and allowing employees to be open about these things. It's interesting because they add a number of other things uh, that they're going to change the corporate culture in an effort to change the corporate culture. No more paternalistic benefits. This was, an, was interesting. For years, we've offered fitness benefits, a wellness allowance, a farmer's market share, and continuing education allowances. They felt good at the time, but we've had a change of heart. It's none of our business what you do outside of work. And it's not base camps placed to encourage certain behavior, regardless of intention. By providing funds for certain things, we're getting too deep into nudging people's personals, personal individual choices. So we've ended these benefits, and as compensation, paid every employee the full cash value of the benefit for this year. In addition, in addition we recently introduced a 10% profit sharing plan to provide direct compensation that people can spend on whatever they'd like privately without company involvement or judgment. There's another pretty big move for Silicon Valley technology company where they lavished employees with stuff that was very much trying to move them in particular lifestyles, in particular orientations. So also interesting. Number three is no more committees. For nearly our, for all of our 21 years existence, we were probably committee free. No big, work, no big working groups making big decisions or putting forward formalized group think recommendations. No bureaucracy. But recently, a few sprung up. No longer we're turning things back over to the person or people who were distinctly hired to make those decisions. <laughs> what a concept. No more committees. Four. No more lingering or dwelling on past decisions. This relates to some of the events that happened that raised all this to the surplus, surface. We've become a bit too precious in, uh, with decision making over the last few years either by wallowing in indecisiveness, worrying ourselves into overthinking things, taking on a defensive posture and assuming the worst outcome is the, likely, is the likely outcome, putting too much energy into something that only needed a quick fix, inadvertently derailing projects when casual suggestions are taken as essential imperatives, or rehashing decisions in different forums or mediums. It's time to get back to making calls, explaining why once and moving on. I like these guys. No more 360 reviews, for those of you who do three, 360 reviews at your companies. No more. 
Employee, perfor employee performance reviews used to be straightforward. A meeting with your manager or team lead, direct feedback and recommendations for improvement. Then a few years ago, we made it hard, worse really. We introduced 360s, which required peers to provide feedback on peers. <laughs> the problem is peer feedback is often positive and reassuring, which is fun to read, but not very useful. Assigning peer surveys started to feel like assigning busy work. Manager employee feedback should be flowing pretty freely back and forth throughout the year. No need to add performative paperwork on top of that natural interaction. interaction. So we're done with 360s too. <laughs> I like these days even more. Then number six and the final one, no forgetting what we do here. Again, I really like this, right? We make project management, team communication, and email software. We are not a social impact company. Yes, <laughs> this is not, a, they're not a social impact company. Our impact is contained to what we do and how we do it. We write business books, blog a ton, speak regularly. We open source software. We give back an inordinate amount of our industry given our size. And we're damn proud of it. Our work, plus that kind of giving, should occupy our full attention. We don't have to solve deep societal problems. Chime in publicly whenever the world requests our opinion on the major issues of the day, or get behind one movement or another uh, with time or treasure. These are all important topics, but they're not our topics at work. They're not what we collectively do here. Employees are free to take up whatever cause they want, support whatever movement they'd like, and speak out on whatever horrible injustices are being perpetrated on this group or that. And unfortunately, there are far too many to choose from. But that's their business, not ours. We're in the business of making software and a few tangential things that touch that edge. We're responsible for ourselves. That's more than enough for us. That is great, guys. That is great. That is inspiring. That gives me hope that there are more people out there like this. This is in the heart of Silicon Valley. This is a, a you know, cutting edge company. And they're saying, we're in business to write software. We're not in business to comment on politics, to get involved in political action. You guys can, and we will too, as individuals, but not as a company. So give Basecamp a thumbs up. I don't know if there's any place you can do that, but give them a thumbs up because it is exciting. It is good. Somebody asked what can be done about all this political correctness. This is what needs to be done. Courageous CEO standing up and saying that. Now, what they said was, just like a Coinbase did a few months ago when they said no more politics in our company, they said, anybody who doesn't like these changes, you can, we'll give you a very generous severance package. You can leave, no hard feelings, but we don't want you to work here if you don't agree with this, and um, you can leave. Now, sadly, but I think it's good for the company long term, a lot of people are leaving. Uh, you know, I, I saw some estimates that maybe a third of the company is leaving the company third and that many senior executives are leading people who've been in the company for a long time people who've developed products people who've led people who've who've been you know important for the company are leaving so I, I I'm sure this is unbelievably painful for the senior managers who, who decided this who did this it's the right decision but often in business, in any, in, in personal life, in, in a lot of things, this goes back to Iran's rules, right? The right decision is often a painful decision in the short run, but it's necessary to avoid even greater pain in the long run. So if you guys are software engineers, if you guys do the kind of stuff that Basecamp does, they're hiring, <laughs> they are hiring. And if you're looking for employees, don't hire the people who have base camp. 
they're obviously troublemakers. They're obviously people who want to bring their particular politics, their particular view of the world, their particular view of, of the culture into work and impose those views on the rest of the workforce. So, so don't hire them. <laughs> um, but yeah, send resumes. Basecamp is hiring. It's hiring for a bunch of different positions, it looks like, given the number of people who are leaving. Uh, it's sad that that is happening, but it is incredibly... Um, it, it's incredible to see people stand up for their principles, for their values. It's incredible to see make people making courageous, right, moral decisions. Um, it's courageous to see, it's, it's inspiring to see people standing up against, against the kind of woke culture creeping into their business or the political culture moving into their business and the kind of environment that that creates. So it's, it's fantastic to see that somebody somewhere is standing up against all this. So, uh, you know, good for you, uh, managers of base camp. Good for, you, good, good for you for standing up to this. Uh, I hope and I'm sure that long term this is going to be good for the company. Uh, I find it hard to believe that there are not a lot of people now rushing to send resumes in because they would like, they would like to work for the company. Indeed, um, if you're not one of these woke leftists, this is a great opportunity to go into a culture that is probably, uh, probably quite healthy and quite good. And to begin with, I wonder if I can ask you to capsulize, I know this is difficult, can I ask you to capsulize your philosophy? What uh, is Randism? I, first of all, I do not call it Randism, and I don't like that name. I right. call it objectivism. All right. Meaning a philosophy based on objective reality. Now let me explain it as briefly as I can. First, my philosophy is based on the concept that reality exists as an objective absolute. That man's mind, reason, is his means of perceiving it. And that man needs a rational morality. I am primarily the creator of a new code of morality which has so far been believed impossible, namely a morality not based on faith. On or faith. Not on faith, not on arbitrary whim, not on emotion, not on arbitrary edict, mystical or social, but on reason, a morality which can be proved by means of logic, which can be demonstrated to be true and necessary. All right. All right. Now, may I define what my morality is? All right. Because this is merely an introduction. My morality is based on man's life as a standard of value. And since man's mind is his basic means of survival, I hold that if man wants to live on earth and to live as a human being, he has to hold reason as an absolute, by which I mean that he has to hold reason as his only guide to action, and that he must live by the independent judgment of his own mind, that his highest moral purpose is the achievement of his own happiness, and that he must not force other people, nor accept their right to force him, that each man must live as an end in himself and follow his own rational self-interest. All right, before we go on, reminder. Please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now. Uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there. Help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share. And uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals 
uh, and uh, and show your support for all for, for for the work for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And uh, and of course don't forget if you're not a subscriber even if you even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.